for Vacation Bible School uh, that starts not this week, but the following week. And, but we're going to be focusing on the scriptures from Vacation Bible School. I'm a believer that Vacation Bible School is not just for kids. In fact, I believe for some of us, Vacation Bible School has been so long ago, Vacation Bible School <laughs> has been so long ago that we can be refreshed and rejuvenated and reinvigorated um, by the messages of Vacation Bible School. And so I take Vacation Bible School seriously and I get into it maybe a little more than any person my age should get into it. But I enjoy it because my grandchildren enjoy it. And if Maria was here today, Maria would be excited to tell you that this was her first VBS. And she was so excited to come to our house and tell us I get to go. I get to go. Not I have to go. I get to go to VBS. That's what you want your kids to say. You want to have that a kind of experience that they get to go to VBS. So, that being said, I'll try not to move so quickly that I blind you with my colored shoes. I want to remind you of a few things. You did so well last week. I don't realize the power I have because I mentioned just once to please pass the fellowship pads in your pew and somebody said, good job. More this week than any week you've been here. So please pass those pews, in the pads in the pews, so that we know who is with us. And if you have a concern, a prayer concern, I believe there's prayer cards in those cards as well, and you can uh, fill those out. There are still slots open for the meet and greets. Uh, we've had three thus far, and uh, they have, uh, Janet and I have very much enjoyed those. There is another sheet in the, I know these are a bit of a nuisance for the ushers, and I apologize for that, we won't do it much longer. This is the little pad to let, or the little sheet to let us know of what your comfort level is in regarding, uh, regarding communion uh, in the months to come. Uh, and so I, I believe in the honor system And if you filled out one last week and you have a certain manner in which you'd like to receive communion and you want to make sure we do it that way, I'm going to trust you that you'll not pack the offering plate with multiple votes of your preference, okay? I'm trusting you to be honorable. Right? Got it. Now, last week, I walked out of here with two or three notes, which gives me an indication that you are listening at the beginning of the service and still remember at the end of the service. That is a good sign. But if you have something, a, a prayer concern that you want me to be aware of, if there's, if there's some other note that you'd like to pass along to me, you can email me or you can put it on a slip of paper and give it to me at the end, at the end of the service because until I get that coffee down in the CAC, my mind kind of goes blank after worship, and I need, I need those triggers. So I'm getting to be of that age 
where the mind kind of goes off into left field sometimes. So if you have a note, put it on a piece of paper for me. If there's something you want me to remember. So I'm going to do my best walk on water and try not to get swallowed up in the waterfall as I direct us to the candles that are lighted on the altar table and remind us as we prepare our hearts, light of Christ, shine on our path, chase away all darkness and lead us to the heart of God. Light of hope floods the earth. Lord, make us ready to journey to this light. And please remain standing for our opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King.
Please join me in this morning's invocation. O oh God, we come before you as a people gathered to behold the Christ, a light dawn that cannot be extinguished. With renewed hope, we offer thanks for this community of faith and your faithful presence among us. Help us to see more clearly your glorious light that we will open our hearts to your reign on earth and dedicate our lives to your service. Amen. Please be seated. Danica, never forget that he's watching you. Prayer concerns are noted in your bulletin this morning, and I invite you to turn to that as we prepare for this time of prayer.
Previously, we have noted that Karen Stuzik, that her mother had passed, and we shared that last week in the worship service, and we continue to lift the Stuzik family in our prayers. You'll note also that um, Reverend Keller's daughter-in-law, Danielle, that there is improvement with the baby, um, but also that Danielle herself, the mother of this baby, has been transferred to a different hospital to further her treatment. And so we keep the Keller family in our prayers. Cecil Riston uh, was in Akron General Hospital. He came home for a bit and we received word overnight that he is back at Akron General Hospital. So please keep Cecil and Sandy uh, in your prayers as uh, this treatment will be extended a little further. He came home with continued antibiotic treatment, but that in intensified and so he needed to go back in. As I've been asking and reminding you for prayer concerns for the VBS that Hudson United Methodist Church will be offering in the week to come. We pray that God will entrust us with the children of this community. We also want to lift condolences and prayers of comfort for the Dietzel family, as that is noted. We pray for Linda Arnold's dear friend back in Kansas City, Diane. We want to be mindful of the victims regarding the floods in Kentucky that just have ravaged. The death count was at 20, mid-20s, 25 or so last evening. I'm not sure if that has increased or not, but beyond the property loss, there are many lives lost and families that have been disrupted to say the least. We also want to be praying for Amy Pendergrass, who has surgery scheduled for this Tuesday morning at Akron General. We continue to pray for Kirk, Jean, Joanne, George, Matt, Maggie, Melinda, and Ken. These are the concerns that I bring before you. And a joy that if you give me a, just a moment of privilege, the joy that I would share is that um, Janet's mom uh, turned 86 Friday. And so eight, 87 on Friday. And so we rejoice uh, with Dorothy Wilson on the anniversary of her birth. These are the concerns that I bring before you, and I've, I'm fully aware that you have concerns and joys that you bring into this time of worship, whether or not we are gathered in this space or you are watching online. And so I pause for a moment that you may lift those concerns and those gratitudes to the throne of God and that we may also listen for the voice of God to bring comfort and strength and hope. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you know our minds and you know our hearts. You know what occupies our thoughts and our energy Lord, we are not strong enough to carry these, and so that we place them in your care, that you would carry our burdens for us. Lord, hear our prayers.
O God of light, we remember this day how you have chosen human beings throughout the course of history to be your witness. We remember you chose Moses who gave your people the law, who led them to freedom. And we remember through your prophets how you sent them among your people and you charged your people through them to live by your law that their lives might be a guiding light to all the nations. And then in your own time, O God, you moved to reveal yourself more fully in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. We give you thanks for the stories which surround his birth and particularly for the story of that bright and wondrous star that guided wise men from far away to his side. With them, we hail the light of your love for your creation and for us, which shone from that little boy and would shine with dazzling radiance from the adult he grew to be. And now here we are thousands of years later, and we praise you for expanding your circle of witness to include all those who find in him the light of the world for creating out of his sacrificial death and resurrection a new people, a worldwide community of disciples that includes us. We are your church, a witness, Christopher's light bearers are we. We pray for the church, for that unique and richly diverse company of women and men who have found in your divine son a fresh start for human history and an unquenchable source of light. Help us, O oh God, to let his light shine from us that we may be sources of light for others who stumble about in ignorance and anxiety and self-destruction, destructive behavior, who stumble around in hatred or any other form of darkness. Grant, O oh God, that we may serve as messengers of your grace for loved ones and friends whose lives have been darkened by illness or who are at this very time, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. May your light shine boldly in our community as we seek to shine your love in all we do. It is in the name of the one we call the light of the world that we pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses against us, and lead us not. Let us join our voices in thy word is a lamp unto my feet.
heard we were going on an adventure. An adventure island is what we are going to be encouraging the young people of our community. And whenever you go on it, you know, have you ever played that game uh, with, um, well, usually it's with your children in a car when you have a trip that's just going to absolutely exhaust your patience. I'm going on a trip, and on my trip I'm going to take something that starts with an A and then a B. Well, I'm going to take binoc binoculars, which might be helpful to see if I took the caps off the binoculars. And it's always good to take a flashlight on an adventure. And so this fits with what we'll be talking about today. But we need to set the stage. We need to be aware of the scripture that the children will be hearing from a most excellent storyteller, I'm told. <laughs> Even if I do tell you myself. And the story comes from Genesis. May God open our ears, our eyes, but most importantly, our hearts to the Word of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And then we turn to the prophet Isaiah. And it is in Isaiah that we hear about another challenge to the people. Isaiah chapter 60 brings us this one verse that will highlight this particular day in the Vacation Bible School experience. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. May God bless the reading and the hearing of God's holy word, for this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. First words first words, famous first words, to be sure. Those words that launched some new venture or discovery in the course of our world. Do you remember Neil Armstrong's first words upon stepping on the moon? And let me give you a hint, no, it wasn't. Where's the bathroom? <laughs> you remember. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. You've heard those. Alexander Graham Bell's first words spoken, well, yes, spoken, on the telephone in about 1875 or so. Mr. Watson! Come here, I want to see you. How about the first words ever sent electronically over wires? I called it the telegraph at the time. Samuel Morris was the first to send a message over a real telegraph line in May 24th, 1844. It was sent from the old Supreme Court chamber in the Capitol building of Washington, D.C. 
Morris sent the first message. It was a Bible verse. Were you aware of that? A Bible verse was the first message that went across electrical lines. Numbers 23, 23. Chosen by Annie Ellsworth. And to the best of my knowledge, she was not a relative. Those flames are really going to be annoying for the rest of this service, aren't they? <laughs> By the way, Annie Ellsworth is not related to the guy who built the clock tower down here. I checked it. I googled it. Wikipedia never lies, right? I mean, come on. So, not the same Ellsworth family. But I did look it up. I researched it. Somebody please remind me to put those back up because I don't want to be on the bad side of a VBS decorator. Anyway, he sent this telegraph to his associate waiting on the other end of the line somewhere in Baltimore. And do you know what those electronic words were? Numbers 23, 23, what hath God wrought? Interesting. Of course, important first words are anticipated what seems like for months by parents who can't wait to hear what little junior or juniorette is going to say next or first. We are listening for our grandsons, Lucas and Nathaniel. We are listening for them, our twin grandsons, for their first words. Did you know the nine most common first words for babies are dada, daddy, Mama, dad, mommy, mom, cat, no, dog. And just as an aside, if your child's first word is money, you no longer have a baby, you have a teenager. <laughs> first words are exciting, and I suggest they announce something new has begun. A new phase in a young life, a new phase in history with the telegraph and the telephone, and no first words would have been possible without the first words ever spoken. Let there be light. First words that we have recorded in the scripture. The first words in history of the universe are spoken not by humans, but by God, who utters those words at the very beginning of a brand new project called creation. God's words signify a, a, a major shift from, from the existing formless chaos on earth, and those words brought about a shift toward order, toward separation, toward goodness, all represented by, by God's illuminating presence. The Creator, in other words, seems to be launching a new creation just by speaking a word, and what a launch it was. Unlike any scene before on earth began the moment God spoke. And suddenly, the scripture you heard me read just a moment ago, a wind from God sweeps over the, the face of the waters and a divine wind or a spirit, if you will, begins to, to work in a creative way with the raw material of all that is called the deep. And God does not reject or say, say no to this chaotic material that was swirling around him, around, before, above, all over. God simply uses this, this chaotic material that was as a part of ordering creation. And with a word, with a word, God flips on the first light. 
and then splits the light from the darkness and the name he names them there is day and there is night and there was evening and there was morning the first day and it was good and it was good Clearly, it can't be said that chaos rules. No, it's clear from what we're experiencing in these opening lines of Genesis, the opening lines of the world, God rules, and God will forever rule. I know we find it hard to believe that sometimes in the world as it unfolds around us, as wars happen, as, as there is poverty, as there is famine, but God rules. God moves confidently from, from chaos to creativity, making something radically good out of the raw material of the primordial deep. God brings order from disorder, can you relate to that in your life? Has God ever moved you from disorder toward order, from the chaos of life into something brand new? God said, let there be light, and there was light. This is the story. This is the story that we're going to introduce the children and the families to who will be a part of VBS, the encounter during that week, Discovery on Adventure Island will tell the story of creation on that first night and invite pint-sized Christ followers to shine God's light of love on all creation. And I am a believer that we never, we never outgrow that shining dawn. We do not outgrow that challenge. We do not outgrow that challenge to see the good in creation. Furthermore, I am a believer that we never outgrow God's challenge to shine God's light of love on all creation and to bring order out of chaos, which is why I'm focusing on the VBS lessons for the next, well, this one and two further um, Sunday morning worship services. I talked to, to Jackie Beam and to Carrie and to uh, Becca um, months ago about the possibilities of doing this and, and having the chancel area prepared for VBS, and they said, no problem. We would love to have the decorations up early and to, and to excite people and to invigorate people for that, for that special, special time. We'll be focusing on these lessons because sometimes we forget Sometimes we forget the stories children absorb, the stories that children hold in their hearts. And sometimes we as adults forget those stories because life gets cluttered, right? Life gets filled with stuff, stuff that keeps us from experiencing the light from being guided by the light. I propose that now more than ever, the story of creation, the story of order and light and goodness and love must be told to a new generation. I am convinced more than ever. Why? Because I don't want my grandchildren to grow up hopeless. I do not want any child to grow up hopeless. I don't want my grandchildren to live in despair. I do not want my grandchildren to live in darkness. I do not want my grandchildren to live in chaos. I do not want any child to believe that that's all there is in life, is despair and darkness and chaos I do not want that to prevail.
undeniably. This world faces many challenges, but that does not mean we give up. The church, Christ followers, first need to be reminded that God's purpose for creation is for good. And God's purpose for human creation is to be doers of good in God's world. You and me and we are meant to shine God's light of love in this world, wherever it is that we may be. Not only should we take care of the environment, which I think is given in part of this, but a reminder to us in the, in the midst of all that's happening with flooding and heat and so forth, we are not only, not only should we be caring for the environment that God has provided, but we should also be caring for people the people around us, for all people. Our purpose is to reflect God's light as we love one another. Now, I know how impossible that might sound as we witness a world that is in chaos, but I hold on to the truth that I hope I make evident as God uses me as a part of the Vacation Bible School experience, namely, that God is more powerful than chaos, that darkness will not overcome the light, and that evil will not win over love. That is how I hope God will use me to speak to the young hearts who gather in vacation Bible school. Because I don't think we can begin early enough to convey that truth, that belief. Chaos will not win. Darkness will not overcome light. Evil will not win over love. Not on God's watch. Not in God's world. Not then. Not now. Not ever. How does light overcome darkness and love overcome evil? By following. By following our Creator, the Word become flesh into the world, not to be crazed by confusion, not to be disturbed by disorder, but with God as our shield and as our protector, our light, we can move confidently from chaos to creativity, making something radically good out of the raw stuff that is around us, and finding ways to manage the tension between order and disorder. Our Lord demonstrates decisively that disorder can be harnessed into order that the old world of chaos can give birth to a new world of creativity and excitement and unexpected growth. We are not too old for VBS stories. Maybe too old for some of the games they play, maybe too old for the recreation that they will incorporate into their evening. And we will never be too old for the snacks they serve at VBS, right? But we must never, we must forever engage the Word of God. There is no expiration date on our learning. how God wants us to live. What if we really challenged ourselves to look for and to find the good in the world? What if we really challenged ourselves to look for the good in the world, especially in people, even when it's difficult? What if we really tried to look at the world through the light of love?
the way God looks at each of us. God looks at you with the light of love. I'm looking at your wife, not mine. <laughs> Danica, God looks at you with the light of love. And you know what God says, Danica? Danica, God even looks at Mr. Stern, who's not stern, he's gentle. He looks at Mr. Stern and says, he's good. He looks at a few others in the sanctuary too. I'm going to let God speak for God's self on those. <laughs> to quote God, if I dare, what if we looked, as I said, with, at people with the light of love? It would be good. So good if we did that. Your offering last week empowered ministry within our congregation <clears throat> and responded to the needs of our community and around the world. Hudson UMC faithfully and sacrificially supports the Hudson Food Pantry with paper towels, staple food items, and physical presence on distribution days. Ministry happens thanks to the way the people of the United Methodist Church live and give connectionally. I invite you to give generously as we worship God through the sharing of our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings.
Please join in our offering prayer. God of light, may our gifts this day be a sign of your offering of ourselves and our substance to your kingdom. Use them to cause righteousness to flourish and peace to abound. For we pray in the name of the one who is the perfect light. Amen. Now please join in the singing of our closing hymn, Be Thou My Vision. Benediction reminder that there are refreshments served down in the CAC area, and they include cupcakes. <laughs> and there'll be a race between Mr. Stern and Danica to the CAC room, okay? We want to video it so that it goes viral, Danica. Dear friends, Go forth now, continuing to seek God's light, reflecting it to all who walk in darkness. Tell others of God's light in Christ, inviting them to search with you for the will of God. With your, with your eyes of faith, search for God's work where others see failure, envision hope in places where others see nothing but despair. And as you walk through the shadows, may they be brightened by God's presence. As you search for God's star, may you find Christ anew. As you walk up and down, around and within, may the light of the Holy Spirit bathe you and our world in God's light. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.